If I am delayed, if I tear it all, he's saying I'm writing these things so that you'll know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. Take your seat as we discuss order in the house. We need to talk south side about some order in the house. Paul, the apostle, former Saul of Tarsus, writes the first of his two epistolaries. To his son in the gospel, his protege, his pupil, those who are stupid. In the Bible, remember that as Paul reached the venerable, sage, wisdom age of old, that he passes the spiritual baton to Titus and to Timothy. In his waning years, he is prudent and wise enough to recognize that he ain't going to live always. And folks, at some point, we need to understand that whatever God has vested in us, we ought to try to empty that into somebody else. Do not take to the grave with you everything that God has deposited in you. You ought to be willing to share, bear, and care enough about the body of Christ. That whatever God has given you, don't be so insecure that you cannot share your spiritual gifts with others who shall come behind you. Paul now in this beautiful soliloquy, addresses soundness in the faith, discipline amongst the saints. In chapter 3 of 1 Timothy, you recall, he begins to lay the railroad tracks down for church order. Yeah. Qualifications of bishops, elders, and deacons. And then as he begins to come to the end of this chapter, Paul expresses a personal desire to see Timothy face to face. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I desire to come and see you shortly. But if I am delayed, if, if, if my chariot malfunctions, yeah. if I don't have sufficient transportation to get to you as expeditiously as I like, he said, I leave this letter so that you may know and the Christians and the Ecclesia of God may know how they ought to behave themselves in the house of God, Amen. which is the church of the living God Amen. and is still the pillar and the foundation of truth. Amen. Paul plead for some order in the house of God of God. He leaves specific instruction concerning behavior in the house of God. And God's house is like any other house. Every house ought to have some house rules. They got rules in the penthouse. They got rules in the poorhouse. They got rules in the white house. They got rules in the courthouse. They even got rules in the drug house. They got rules at your house. You got rules at your house. I got rules at my house. And we all have some rules in God's house. We need some order in God's house. A house, by definition, is a structure or a building or a dwelling place. In the Old Testament, it was depicted as a tent where inhabitants resided usually in the same family. You can have uh, guest quarters at your house. You can have a private home. You can have an apartment home. You can have a trailer home. You can have a 
government home. You can have public housing. And a few of you all even live in a palace. But everybody needs some order in their house. In times of old, when Egypt ruled the world, when Mesopotamia was prominent, in ancient Palestinian times, in the Greco-Roman world, in the Hellenistic period in history, people would build houses with an upper room, an upper chamber. I, I remember reading how they would allow livestock in bad weather or, or cataclysmic calamity times. Livestock and animals would be allowed to come to the lower floor. Strangers and sojourners and, and gypsies would be allowed to come unto the lower floor of the house. But the upper room, the upper chamber, was reserved for special people and usually for spiritual purposes. They didn't allow anybody or anything in their upper room. They reserved their upper room in the house for God. I was at the church here. You and I metaphorically need to understand in your life, in mine, just about anybody can matriculate in your life and you can allow them on the lower floor. But there's some things that ought to be so sacred and important to you that they're reserved in the upper room of your life and that's for God and for God alone. You need some order in your house. In the Old Testament, you remember the temple or the tabernacle or the Ark of the Covenant. God had a house that was a sanctuary for his people. But as we, as we segue into the New Testament era, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, remember Paul said, Know ye not that your body now is the house of the temple of God. 